We're going to introduce truth trees and predicate logic by focusing on only four rules today, and then we will start to add more. First rule is going to be negated existential decomposition, and then we're going to follow it up with negated universal decomposition. And what we're going to do with these rules is just convert them so that the negation is after the quantifier in each case. So, for example, in a truth tree, let's say that we have there does not exist an x and there's some formula p. It doesn't matter if p has x in it or not, and we say this is on uh, some line in our truth tree, let's say it's line i, then what we can do is we can convert this to for all x, not p. So we'd say that, well, if we put line i and line j here, if we want to be more formal, we would say this is from line i, and we did not existential decomposition. And how you could think of this is basically you're just pushing the negation through, and whenever you push the negation through, you simply change an existential to a universal or vice versa. And we are going to see that with negated universal decomposition. So let's say we have line i and line j, and on line i we have not for all x p. We can do the same thing. We can simply push the negation through to the p, and then we'll flip the sign here. So this will be exists in x such that not p. So from line i, this would be not universal decomposition. Okay, so uh, we can also think of this in terms of you know why this works for meaning. If there is no such thing that's p, which is so we're going to do negated existential decomposition first. If there's no such thing that is p, that means that everything has to be not p. And similarly for negated universal decomposition, if not everything is p, then that has to mean that there's something out there that is not p. So these are our first two rules, and these are just mechanical. We just push a negation through. Uh, the second two rules are a little bit more involved, and when you do a truth tree, you have to be somewhat creative with them. So the first one is universal elimination. So let's say we have line i, and we have something like for all x, p. And maybe a negation is in p. What we can do in line j is we can remove the universal quantifier, and everything inside the formula p that has x, we can replace it with a constant. So what this symbol means here is that whatever we have an x in p, it becomes a. So for example, let's say we have a formula that is for all x, uh, px arrow hx. If we want to do universal elimination, we can replace all of the x's with any constant of our choosing. So we could say this is pa arrow ha, or we could say this is pb arrow hb. As long as all of the x's are being replaced with the same thing, this counts as universal elimination. And formally we'd say, okay, from line i, we did universal elimination. And if you want to track the variable that you replaced it with, well, that's fine, you can put it in a little bracket there. So just another quick example of this working. Let's say we have all x and we have pxy. When we do universal elimination, we only change the x's here. So we would do this into pay, and then I, y here is likely still going to be a variable rather than a constant. Okay. So the second one out of our last two are going to, is going to be existential elimination. And this is going to look very similar to what we just did, but there is a difference. So let's say we have exists an x in some formula p. We can do the same thing. We can replace x with any constant a, but there is a restriction. And this is the restriction. a has to be a new constant. In other words, we're going to establish something else in the universe that has that property p. So for example, let's say in a truth tree, I have for all x, px, and I change this to pa, for example. And then 
I have this other thing that says exists in x px. If I want to do existential elimination, I cannot pick a anymore. I have to pick a new constant. So I could do pb or I could do pc, but I cannot do pa in this case uh, if I'm doing a conversion on the existential. If I'm eliminating the existential here. So formally, we just do the same thing. We'd write, okay, from line i, we did existential elimination. And we could even put the little letter in there if we wanted to. So let's see how these rules work in action. So reminder for truth trees, a set of woofs is inconsistent if every branch closes. If you don't know what a truth tree is, I have videos in propositional logic that cover them. So please look at those for the basics. Uh, we're going to assume all of the rules of propositional logic, and we're just adding new rules for predicate logic. So the first thing we want to do is set this up for each formula. So we have for all x, gx, arrow, exists in x, hx. So let's say this is line one. So this is just an assumption. So I'll write ass on the side because it's funny to abbreviate assumption as ass. Uh, and then we also have exists in x, not gx. This is our other assumption. So this is our second ass of the problem. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Well, what we can do first is we can use existential decomposition on line two. So we could replace not gx with say not ga. Okay, and then we'll check this off so we know that we're done with it. So we'll say from line two, we did existential elimination or existential decomposition. You'll see both names. Okay, now we have to deal with the first line. And what we see with the first line is an arrow with two separate woofs on each side. So we'll have to split these off into two different branches. So let's just use a tool for that so it looks a little bit nicer than my lines. Okay, so in line four, uh, all x, gx arrow exists in x, hx is true if the antecedent is false, so if we have for not all x, gx, or if the consequent is true. So we can say exists in x, hx. Okay. So we'll check that off, we're done with it. This is from line one, and this was just uh, the arrow elimination. Okay, um, let's say in line five, let's just finish the right branch off. So we can do say HB. We cannot use A here because A has already been used in the branch above us, somewhere higher in the tree. So we have to pick a new constant, in which case we picked hb, and that's fine. So this was from line four, and this was existential elimination. So the branch on the right is completely done. We finished everything. So this is an open branch. Okay, so this means at this point, we know that this is consistent because not every branch closes. Uh, but for the sake of completion, let's just keep going. Okay, so uh, in line six, not all x, gx, we have a negation out front. So we're going to want to push that through and change the side to get there exists in x such that not gx. So from line four, this is not all decomposition. And now in line seven, we can once again do an existential substitution on exists in x, not gx. Now, uh, we cannot use a because A has been used above, but it is perfectly fine in this case to use B. Uh, we could use C if we wanted to, but this B on the right is in a separate branch. So that B is like a totally different B than the one we're assuming on our other branch. So you could use B in this situation, or you could just use another letter to make it a little bit easier on yourself. So six, and that would be existential, elimination and we found out that this branch is closed or sorry is this branch is open as well uh, all of our things have been used so both branches are open therefore the formula is consistent okay uh, let's do another example which we'll do two more so let's set up this problem again so we have three to start with so we have not for all x uh, px arrow qx 
we have not exists in x qx and we have not exists in x ex. Okay, and these are all assumptions. Now, I don't like starting things like this personally because we have a lot of negations out front, which means our first three steps are just going to be doing uh, negation decomposition. So let's just do that. Let's get that out of the way. So for one, we're going to push the negation through and flip the sign. So we get exists in x, not px arrow qx. Uh, remember to keep the negation outside of the brackets. Do not push that negation in. So that's line four. That's one, not all decomposition. And line five, let's do not exist in x. So this is for all x, not qx. So because there's just one predicate inside, we can push it inside the brackets. That's not going to be a problem. So this is two, not exist uh, decomposition. And in six, let's get rid of this one too. So we'll do for all x, not px. So that's three, not exists decomposition. Okay, now one bit of advice I have for you is that you should always do the existentials before the universals if possible, because universals can reuse letters and constants that have already been done. So that's where we can get our contradictions. Existentials can't. You always have to do something new, so you should introduce the new thing first and then, use, and then use the universals to make the contradictions. So uh, that's what we'll do. So what I'm going to do is from line four, I am going to assign a new constant to this. So instead of exists in x, not px arrow qx, we're going to do not, and then we'll do pa arrow QA. So we're just substituting in a new constant. So from line four, this was existential elimination. Now let's break PA and QA up. So if you remember from propositional logic truth trees, this means that we can separate this into PA and not QA. So in other words, uh, PA arrow QA is false when PA is true and QA is false. So that gives us PA and not QA. So both of these are line seven, and this is just decomposition on the arrow or elimination on the arrow. Okay, so we've checked this off. Now in line 10, all we have to do is five and six. So all X not QX and all X not PX. Now, I don't think line five is going to be too useful for us, but I do see for all x not px. So in line six, now because I have the universal, I can use a letter I've already used because everything in the universe, all x is not px. So I'm going to do decomposition, sorry, elimination on the universal. So in line six, universal elimination, to get not PA. Now we have a contradiction because in 11, we can get PA and not PA together. So this is from lines eight and 10 through and introduction. And now we have a contradiction. And this means that the branch closes. So I didn't really have to do this last step. I could have just seen, okay, we have this and this and now we'll close. But just to fully illustrate, that's how it happened. Now our only branch closes, that's all the branches we have. Uh, therefore, this is going to be inconsistent. Okay, so if we would have done universal elimination first and got not PA first, we would have had to use a different variable or a different constant for the existential elimination. So we would have had to do not PB arrow QB and we wouldn't have been able to get this contradiction. So we do existentials first when possible and then universals after. So one more example, let's set this up and I like this example because we have something with two quantifiers. So for all X exists Y, LXY. So that's going to be line one, we have LTA and not LAT, that's line two. 
and we have not exists a y, l a y, and that's line three, and these are all assumptions. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the negation through line three and do not existential decomposition. So we're going to get all y, not l a y. So from line three, not existential decomposition. Now in line five, what do we do now? Well, we have LTA and not LAT, so let's just break this down. Okay, so we have LTA and we'll have LAT, but that's the negation in front of it. So from line two, we're doing and elimination. So this is one of our very early rules. Now, uh, what I see, is I see LTA and I see not LAT. So what I'm thinking is I need to try to get not LTA or I need to get LAT if I want to prove that this branch closes. So this is what I'm thinking about in the background. Okay. But let's see what we can do here. Um, the universal in four doesn't look like it's going to give me anything right now. It's not going to give me LAT or not LTA. So I'm just going to leave four for a little bit and I'm going to focus on one. So from one, I want to do uh, universal elimination. So what I'm going to end up with exists a Y and then I'm going to get L and I'm going to get some constant in there and Y. So I have to figure out which constant I want to use. Now, when I take a look at this frame, L constant Y, I see that maybe I could replace it with a T and end up with LTA, or I could replace it with an A and end up with LAT at some point. Now, the reason I'm suggesting this uh, is because I want something that's relevant to what we're already doing. But now I'm realizing that there's an, exist an existential here. So we're gonna have to put something new in for Y, but we can put something old in for X. So I'm keeping this in mind. So now my thought is that I'm gonna to have to use four at some point. So uh, let's just put A in. Let's just say exists a Y, L, A, Y, and let's just see what happens. Okay, so I say, what, let's see what happens, but let me talk about my reasoning for this. If I look at four, it says every Y is not L-A-Y. So I want to make something that is L-A-Y, and that's going to give me a contradiction. So in line eight, uh, let's do another existential elimination here. Let's just make this. Uh, L, A, and let's use a new letter we haven't used before, which is B. So from line seven, we're going to do existential elimination. So now we have L, A, B. Okay, so I'm realizing now that my attempts to get something like L, not L, T, A, or L, A, T, uh, it's not really going to do anything for me. It's not really relevant. But I do have one more trick up my sleeve. I can do something with for all Y, not L, A, Y. And because I have a universal, I can use a constant I've already used before. So I can use not L, A, B at this point. I can put in a B for Y. So from four, we get universal elimination. And now we end up with L, A, B and not L, A, B. So together, these form a contradiction. Therefore, we know this is going to be an inconsistent set of woofs. Okay, so those are the three exercises I've had in this video. Uh, this one, this last one was a little bit longer. I wanted to sort of explain my, process, my thought process and do it live. Um, so hopefully that helped. And you can get a little bit more strategy with doing these proofs. So we're going to uh, introduce some more rules and do some more complicated proofs uh, but for now I hope this was the basics if you have any questions put them in the comments below and me or someone else will hopefully be able to answer them